Today, we have an epic battle for you. We have nine of the best laptops ever made going head to head. These laptops are premium, they are powerful, and yet they're still portable. From Apple, we've got the venerable MacBook Pro 14. Lenovo is entering the octagon with their new contender, the Slim Pro 9i. Asus is battle-hardened with their new ZenBook Pro 14 and updated G14. Green leader Razer is reporting in with their much improved Blade 14. MSI is engaging at warp speed with their new Stealth 14 Studio. Dell's Assassin, the Alienware X14 R2 is in the house. And representing Gigabyte is the Aero 14. Even Schenker from Europe has sent over their Vision 14 to compete. Making this video was an epic effort and only the bravest of you will make it through to the end. So to say thank you for the two weeks of solid round the clock testing that my team and I did, make sure to smash that like button and get subscribed. Now, each laptop will be given a score out of five for each major category. At the end, we'll add up the scores and declare a winner. You'll find our scoring sheet linked in the description below. So if you disagree with a score that we've given a particular laptop, you can download the sheet and change it. And that sheet will have links to the best prices for each of these machines. And yes, like all our best of lists, we will be keeping that sheet up to date. So make sure you bookmark it. Look and feel. When you see all these laptops next to each other, three just stand out. They are the MacBook Pro 14, Blade 14, and ZenBook Pro 14. The MacBook Pro 14 is the best build. It also isn't a fingerprint magnet, which the other two are. However, it looks dated when compared to the Blade 14 slick looking black chassis, or the ZenBook stark blue minimalist looking one. All are getting the full five points. And if you are wondering if the ZenBook Pro 14 is better built than the 14X, it is. Just running your fingers along the bottom of the chassis, you'll notice that the panels join more snugly together. Plus the ZenBook Pro 14 has the Asus dial in a much better position than on the larger Pro 16X, which I recently reviewed. It's now integrated into the top left of the trackpad. So I no longer misclicked it with my left wrist like I did on that 16 inch laptop. Next is a surprise. It's the G14 with a score of four out of five. We thought because of its plastic chassis, it would look and feel cheap, but it's actually really sturdy and its cool design and white color just looks great. Next is the Slim Pro 9i, the Aero 14, and the Alienware X14 with a score of three out of five. The Pro 9i is very well built. It has rounded edges, which makes it really comfortable to rest your wrists on, particularly when you're using the laptop on a surface without support for your arms, like a plane's tray table. The laptop's edges just won't bite into you like they do on a MacBook Pro. But the Pro 9i's design, it just looks boring. The Aero 14 looks surprisingly good, and we really like its small form factor. It isn't quite as well built though as the best laptops in this roundup. Alienwares usually look great, and this one does. But unlike other Alienwares, it isn't that solidly built. We notice significant flex in the display. You can even hear noise when you move it. Last is the Schenker Vision and Stealth 14. The Vision 14 screen has a very loose hinge and it's just not built as well as the other laptops. I literally almost cut myself running my finger along its bottom edge. The MSI Stealth 14 for the most part looks dated and feels cheap. That being said, we do like the way the Stealth logo lights up in RGB at the back of the laptop. The Vision and Stealth are getting a score of two out of five. Portability. The Vision 14 is the lightest of the bunch, but its included power brick is large for only 140 watts. That being said, it is the lightest, so it needs to get the max score of five points. The MacBook Pro 14 and Aero 14 are next with four points. Even though the MacBook itself is 100 grams heavier than the Aero, the Mac has a slightly larger screen at 14.2 inches, and the Aero's included charger is on the heavier end. Next with three points is the ZenBook Pro 14, Slim Pro 9i, and G14. Please note that the ZenBook and Slim Pro 9i do have larger 14.5 inch screens, so it is understandable that these are a little heavier. With a score of two points, it's the Alienware X14, Stealth 14, and Blade 14. Not only are these heavier, but the X14 and Stealth 14 have an unusual size, so they will be harder to fit into a regular 14 inch laptop sleeve. The Blade 14, on the other hand, is just heavy compared to the others, and it can't run on full performance when on USB charging. Now for the larger, more powerful laptops that have a barrel pin charger, they do actually support USB-C charging. So for days that you just don't need the full performance out of the laptop, you can leave that charger at home. You can buy a smaller USB-C charger and bring that with you. Display. 
All these laptops have very good to extremely good displays. They all have high resolution panels, so content on screen looks nice and sharp. They all offer fast refresh rates, so movement on screen looks nice and smooth. And they all have excellent color reproduction. If I had to pick the best displays, with a score of five, it's the Slim Pro 9i and the MacBook Pro 14. They both are the only laptops with mini LED panels. The Pro 9i is brighter with a faster refresh rate, but you can see more content on screen with the Mac. The G14 and Stealth 14 are next. Both have excellent all-round displays and you can see more content on screen without needing to squint than the next group of laptops, so a score of four. With a score of three is the ZenBook. Its vivid OLED panel is lovely, but it isn't the brightest and it does use PWM flickering to lower the brightness, but it is minimal. The Blade, Alienware and Vision are all getting a score of two because we struggled to see a decent amount of content on screen without needing to squint. This was particularly odd for the Blade because on paper it has all the right metrics, but in real life the display just looked dim. We just don't know why. Now, the Aero 14 is also getting a score of two. It actually should get a higher score as its display is stunning, but it has some really bad PWM flickering when you lower the brightness. Keyboard. With a winning score of five out of five, it's the Slim Pro 9i. Its typing experience feels like a mechanical keyboard with clicky blue switches, and that is fantastic. It feels super responsive with a fast, satisfying click. With an almost perfect score of four out of five, it's the MacBook Pro 14, Asus G14, Aero 14, and ZenBook Pro 14. The MacBook Pro's keyboard feels high quality, but you do notice it being a little low travel compared to something like the G14. The G14, on the other hand, feels more luxurious with its extra key travel, but the keys do feel ever so slightly spongy. The ZenBook Pro 14 has an excellent keyboard and feels the same as the one on the 14X, good travel with a satisfying click. It just doesn't have quite the magic of the Slim Pro 9i's keyboard. Aero 14 also has a comfortable keyboard with a good amount of travel, but typing on it just doesn't feel quite as precise as typing on a MacBook Pro. Next is the Alienware and Blade 14 with a score of three out of five. The Alienware's keyboard itself feels extremely comfortable to type on. It's one of my favorites, but the keyboard is pushed forward from where it normally is. So my palm was resting halfway off the chassis and that made the experience feel a little uncomfortable. The Blade 14, many reviewers, including me, have been complaining about their keyboards for years. They're just not comfortable. They feel really low travel and unsatisfying to type on. It does have individually lit RGB keys though, which make it look very pretty. With a score of two out of five is the Vision 14 and Stealth 14. The Vision 14, its keyboard just feels spongy and low travel. The Stealth 14's keyboard feels noticeably low travel and the arrow keys are really small and they're nestled right next to the page up and down keys. This caused me to frequently have miss hits. I didn't like typing on this keyboard at all. The only reason it's getting a two, not one, is because it has individually lit RGB keys. Trackpad. No surprises, the MacBook Pro 14 has the best trackpad, but the G14's is extremely good. Just the right amount of smoothness without feeling slippery, and it has a very accurate click. I'm giving both these laptops a perfect score of five out of five. The Blade 14 is next with a score of four out of five. It's tracking felt as smooth and accurate as the G14's, but to click it required more force than I like. Next is the ZenBook Pro 14, Alienware X14, Slim Pro 9i with a score of three out of five. The ZenBook Pro 14 and Pro 9i are similar to the Blade, but not quite as good. Both have good tracking, but their clicks just require too much force. The Alienware X14 also has a really good trackpad, although the click isn't quite as satisfying as the top performing G14. The only reason that I've bumped it down into this grouping is because its trackpad is very small. Last is the Aero 14, Vision 14 and Stealth 14 with a score of two out of five. The Aero's trackpad is just too slippery and it requires too much force to click. The Stealth 14's trackpad is the opposite. It's not smooth enough. Its click also feels like it has a double click to it, which is a bit disjointing. And the Vision 14's trackpad just feels cheap, slippery with an inaccurate click. Sound, shocking absolutely no one here. The MacBook Pro 14 speakers were by far the best and it's getting the max score of five points. <laughs> Its speakers produce a high quality sound that has bass and gets very loud. Next, with a score of four out of five, is the Slim Pro 9i and the ZenBook Pro 14. The Slim Pro 9i has decent bass and the speakers produce a high quality sound, but at full volume, the sound becomes a little distorted. The ZenBook on the other hand has very little bass, but it does get loud and it isn't distorted at max volume.
FYI, the ZenBook Pro doesn't have the issue of the 14X. That's where, when you pick it up off a desk, the sound gets noticeably softer as it doesn't have a surface to bounce off. With a score of three points is the G14. It gets loud and has a little bass, but it lacks the quality of the sound of the other laptops that I just talked about. With a score of two points is the Razer, Alienware, Stealth and Vision. The Razer has a good quality sound, but it is just too quiet. I remember this being an issue on my prior 15 inch blades that I tested. I would always find myself smashing the volume up button trying to get more sound out of it. The Alienware got loud enough, but has a tinny sound with no bass. The MSI sounded a little distorted at full volume and had a flat, uninspiring sound. The Vision speakers just sounded muddy, although it did have some bass. <laughs> Last, with a dreadful score of one point, is the Aero 14. Its speakers are just awful. They appear loud, but in reality it actually sounds quiet. My hypothesis is that's because it's pushing a very narrow frequency range really hard. Ports. Ports is a challenging one as there are so many factors to look at, variety, speed and placement. Overall, the laptops with the best ports are the Blade 14 and the MacBook Pro 14. Every port that these have are very fast. They offer a wide selection and they have charging capable ports on either side of the laptop. Their port placement is also very good as they are all towards the back of the computer. So devices you've got plugged in won't get in your way. Main difference is that the Blade offers legacy USB-A ports but lacks an SD card reader. The MacBook Pro has a fast SD card reader but has no USB-A ports. These both get a score of five out of five. Hot on their heels is the ZenBook Pro 14 and the Pro 9i with a score of four out of five. Both these have only one fast Thunderbolt port. The ZenBook has great port selection with USB-A and an SD card reader. The reason it is in this category is because its ports are close to the front of the laptop, so they can get in your way. The Slim Pro 9i has the ports in a better position, but it can only be charged from the right side of the laptop. With a score of three out of five is the Stealth 14, G14, Vision 14, and Alienware X14 R2. All these have more significant gotchas. The G14 has its ports very far forward on the laptop, which will get in your way. The Stealth is similar and also lacks an SD card reader. The Vision 14 has slower ports. The Alienware X14's ports are all round the back, so plugging devices in and out of them can be a pain as you can't see where the ports are. Lastly, with a score of two out of five is the Aero 14. Like the Alienware, it has a similar issue where its USB-A port is at the back of the laptop making it hard to access. It also has a wasted USB-C port on the left side that can only be used for charging and not data. And the USB-C ports on the right side are the opposite, they don't support charging. Performance. When it comes to performance, we tested all laptops on Geekbench, which tests how they perform in common performance tasks. We then tried a single run of Cinebench, which tests how the laptops perform under max load. And after, we tried a 10 minute run of Cinebench to test how they sustain their performance over time. As there were no clear winners across all three tests, I'm going to award a score of four to the MacBook Pro, G14, ZenBook Pro 14, Stealth 14, and Blade 14. The MacBook had fantastic Geekbench scores and was able to maintain its max performance for a long time. That being said, its max multi-core performance was not as good as the others. The G14 and ZenBook are just great all-round performers. The Stealth was an insanely strong performer in Cinebench, and even though its performance did drop a lot during our 10 minute torture test, it was still super fast. The Blade 14 with its Zen 4 processor was a beast in Cinebench, but it just couldn't keep up with the Mac in Geekbench. With a score of three is the Alienware X14, Aero 14, and Pro 9i. The Alienware put up good numbers, but was not close to a lead in any of the tests. The Aero 14 was decently fast, but in our sustained 10 minute torture test, it dropped more. The Pro 9i performed well, but had the lowest Geekbench single core scores. Finally, with a score of two is the Vision 14. Its performance was consistently worse than the other laptops. Graphics. To test graphics performance, we ran the Time Spy Gaming benchmark, as well as the Cyberpunk benchmark. And then for video editing, we ran the Puget Premiere Pro benchmark. Important note, 
The G14, Blade and Stealth can all be configured with much better graphics than the units we have. Therefore, we're going to just step back and take a holistic approach to scoring graphics performance. We're going to give the G14 a score of 5 as it can be configured with an insanely powerful RTX 4090. The Max, M2 Pro and Max chips have very powerful graphics that are also incredibly power efficient. But most AAA games just can't be played natively on Mac OS, so I was going to give it a score of 4 but it crushes video editing when compared to these Windows laptops, so I'm also going to give it a score of 5. The Blade 14, ZenBook Pro 14 and Stealth 14 can all be configured with an RTX 4070, so I'm giving them a score of 4. Fellow reviewer Dave2D has a video about this, where he demonstrated that for a laptop RTX 4070, there is no additional benefit for an increase in power above 110 watts. So don't be misled by Razer's marketing. Next with a score of 3 is the Alienware X14 with its RTX 4060. Then it's a score of 2 for the Slim Pro 9i and the Aero 14 with their RTX 4050s. Special note, the Slim Pro 9i's RTX 4050 outperforms the Aero 14 with a score of 1 is the Vision 14 with last year's RTX 3050. Hidden fan noise. For light use, like browsing the web and using Office, I was pleased to see a significant improvement from many of the high-performing Windows laptops. It used to be only the MacBook that was dead quiet and felt cool to the touch for this use case. The Slim Pro 9i now also enters that realm of being quiet and cool to the touch. The Razer, Stealth 14 and G14 were very quiet, but they did feel noticeably warm. Actually, I found the G14 outright uncomfortably warm. A positive of the G14 though is that this year's model has almost no fan noise for light use, where last year's did. The Alienware and Vision for the most part were quiet and only felt a little warm. However, the Alienware and Vision do have high-pitched fan noise, so if you do anything intensive, even for a brief moment, you will notice the fan noise. The Aero's fans on the other hand regularly turned on and it got really warm to the touch. For heavy performance, we tested heat and fan noise extensively, including during Cinebench, Time Spy and Cyberpunk. Overall, when it comes to heat and fan noise, I'm going to give the MacBook Pro a score of 5. In real-world heavy use, the MacBook Pro 14's efficient processor was on full display. It was the only laptop to be silent or close to it and it didn't feel that warm to the touch. You're going to see it louder and hotter in the benchmark results, but these are benchmark results and not real-world performance tasks. The Windows laptops on the other hand, their heat and fan noise when doing real-world performance tasks did actually match what we recorded during our benchmark testing. With a score of 4 out of 5 is the Slim Pro 9i. Honestly, there was a pretty big drop to the next grouping of laptops being the Blade 14 and ZenBook Pro 14, which I'm going to give a score of 2 to. The Blade, as I said, was quiet in casual use, and it remained decently cool in gaming. But while you were gaming, its fan noise was extremely loud. The rest of the laptops all are getting a score of 1, because they all had at least one or more gating issues. For example, the G14 and Stealth 14 get insanely hot to the touch in gaming, and the Alienware X14 and Vision have high-pitched fan noise and that is annoying. When it comes to upgradability, the only laptop that truly should get full marks is the Framework laptop, as it's fully upgradable. But that laptop isn't even in this battle, as it doesn't have powerful graphics like these ones do. And to be honest, I find the most important things to upgrade is really just memory and storage. So. I'm going to give full marks to the Blade 14, Stealth 14 and Vision 14. All support upgrading those components. The G14 and ZenBook Pro 14 both get a score of 4, as each of them have one stick of memory that can be upgraded, as well as their storage and Wi-Fi. The Alienware X14 R2 gets a score of 3, because it has upgradable storage, and although its memory is not upgradable, it can be configured with a respectable 32GB. The Aero 14 and MacBook Pro 14 are last here with a score of 2. The Aero 14 does have a replaceable SSD, but its memory maxes out at only 16GB. The MacBook Pro is completely unupgradable, which sucks. The only thing keeping it from a score of 1 is that it can be configured with up to 96GB of memory and a whopping 8TB of storage. Battery life. The best laptop on battery by far was the MacBook Pro 14. In our battery rundown test, which dims the screen to 200 nits, then plays a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours, it had 75% remaining, indicating around 16 hours for this use case. Also, it was the only laptop to be able to sustain its full performance when on battery. Full marks with a score of 5. Next is the Vision 14 with a score of 4. Not only does it last a decent amount of time with its massive 99 watt hour battery, but its performance doesn't drop that much when on battery. 
Next, with a score of 3, is the G14, ZenBook Pro 14 and Slim Pro 9i. The ZenBook Pro 14 lasts the longest on battery, but it has a larger performance drop. The Slim Pro 9i is kind of the opposite. It has a mild drop in performance when on battery, but it doesn't last as long. Next with a score of 2 is the Stealth 14, which in our test will likely only get you around 5 hours of use, but its performance drops massively to do so. Last with a score of 1 is the Blade 14 and Alienware X14. Neither of these laptops could complete our 4 hour test. I'm going to make two adjustments. The Stealth 14 is the only laptop to have a 720 webcam, which in 2023 is really unacceptable. So it's getting a minus 1. And then there is our dearest Razer Blade 14. We noticed an issue when we played a Netflix movie on full screen mode on battery power. We see really weird artifacts all over the screen making it unusable. And even when we close the browser, they're still there. We have to restart the laptop to clear it up. And yes, all drivers and software were up to date. So we called Razer's notorious support and boy did they live up to their terrible reputation. They were insistent that we installed the Intel Graphics Command Center, even though this laptop is an AMD laptop with AMD integrated graphics and Nvidia dedicated graphics. There is no Intel graphics in this laptop, but they were insistent. Search and select the Intel Graphics Command Center. Uh, Intel? Yes, Intel. So, minus one to Razer. With that all said, here are our final scores. The MacBook Pro 14 won by a good margin with a score of 53 out of 60. Honestly guys, the combination of Apple's efficient M2 processor and Apple's overall device quality is just too much for these Windows competitors. Apple Silicon offers similar performance to AMD and Intel, but it gives you substantially less fan noise, less heat, and far better battery. But what I was pleased to see is if you do want to go for a Windows laptop, the Slim Pro 9i, ZenBook Pro 14 and G14 are all fantastic machines. So here's my recommendation. If you don't need a Windows machine for the software you run, the MacBook Pro 14 is the best option. If you do want the best all-round Windows laptop that's powerful, portable and premium, it's the Slim Pro 9i. If you need more graphics power though, the ZenBook Pro 14 is where it's at. If you do want to predominantly game on the laptop, I personally found gaming on these just isn't ideal. A 14 inch screen is just too small to be immersive and all these laptops are just packing two powerful components into their small chassis. So what you get is a laptop that feels very warm to the touch while gaming and has loud fan noise. With that said, I feel the best use case for these is if you like to game, is to plug them into an external monitor keyboard and mouse. In that setup, I believe the G14 is the one to get. It is decently priced and has powerful graphics options, and its only real downside is the heat you feel while using it. And in the setup I just mentioned, you won't feel heat because you'll be using an external keyboard. If you must do AAA gaming on the laptop itself, I'd go for the Alienware or the Razer. The Alienware's keyboard being forward from where it normally is just pays off here, as your hands don't feel as much of the heat. The Razer has big fans under the keyboard deck which suck hot air out of the laptop, so the heat you feel is manageable. When it comes to the Stealth 14, Aero 14 and Schenker Vision 14, unfortunately they were just not competitive in this roundup. It doesn't mean they are terrible machines, they aren't, they just can't be considered as the best 14 inch laptop that you can buy. Well, that's all for today, folks. Congratulations to our winners. I want to know from you, which is your favorite 14 inch laptop and why? Let me know with a comment below. Make sure to like and subscribe. It is the least you can do for the enormous amount of effort that we put into making these videos. Plus, as I always say, it makes all of our mothers very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.